Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Mount View Baptist Church uh, online service. Uh, we're so glad to have you uh, here with us uh, today. Uh, let's begin our service today with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to come and to uh, worship you. I thank you, Lord, that uh, we have the opportunity uh, each week to uh, uh, still have our worship service. Uh, Lord, we'd love to have everybody here in the building, but Lord, uh, we can't do that right now. But you've provided this way that we can be together. And so, uh, Lord, we thank you for that. And so I just pray, God, that you'll be pleased with everything that we say and do here this morning. And we'll give you the praise. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me uh, begin as we have each week uh, with a little time with our children. So uh, if you'll uh, gather the children around, I want to talk to them uh, for just a moment and uh, have, have a word uh, with them. So uh, kids, it's good to see you today and, and uh, we love you. And You know, one of the hardest things about uh, this time uh, right now, especially for somebody like me that likes to give out a lot of hugs, is I can't hug people. And so uh, maybe you're feeling that a little bit too. And so I wanted to do something uh, this morning. Uh, kids, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold your arms out real wide uh, like this. Okay, everybody doing that? All right, hold your arms out real wide like that. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to give yourself a big hug. So do like this. Oh. All right, everybody, give yourself a big hug. Okay, all right. So that's a hug for me. All right, now, let's do it one more time. Hold your arms out just like this, okay? Now give yourself a big hug just like this. Go, okay. Now, here's what I want you to say while you're hugging yourself. Say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. All right, now, I want you to do I want you to do that this morning because I just want to remind you that Jesus loves you and he cares for you and he wants what's best for you. I'm going to talk to your parents about that in just a few minutes, but thank you for watching today and so you can run on and do now whatever your parents tell you to do. Well, at this time, uh, we're going to have a special treat. Uh, David Phillips, our minister of music, and his daughter, Christy Breland, are going to come and sing for us.
If that blessed you, say amen. Somebody write amen on your Facebook page. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, don't, don't scroll away now because you've already been blessed. Uh, but uh, we could all leave right now and leave happy. Uh, we thank you, uh, David and Christy, for that wonderful uh, song and, and for blessing us uh, this morning. Let me, uh, let me begin today just by saying, if you, uh, if you just watch the news all the time, you're scared to death right now. I mean, really. I, I, honestly, I'll tell you, I don't watch the news as much uh, anymore as I should. Uh, and the reason I don't watch the news that much anymore is because, for number one, I don't know who to trust anymore. Because it seems like everybody's got their own agenda and everybody's got their own thing and you don't know who's telling you the truth and who's not. And if you just keep your eyes on that TV all the time, you're going to be living in fear. In fact, uh, the other night, uh, my wife, Amanda, she said, come in here and watch this. And, and so I went in there with her and, and we watched uh, some of the news. And it's scary. It really is. So let me get right to the point this morning. Does a relationship with Jesus Christ really make a difference? Well, obviously, many people in our world today do not believe that it does. Uh, unfortunately, uh, many people do not believe in Christ or in the need to develop a relationship with Him. But I want to begin today by saying to you that a relationship with Jesus Christ does make a difference. In fact, I believe that a relationship with Jesus Christ makes all the difference in the world. In our text today in 2 Timothy chapter 4, so let me invite you to turn there. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. Uh, we're going to look today at verses 16 uh, to 18. And so in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, Beginning with verse 16, Paul gives us three examples of how a relationship with Jesus Christ can and does make a difference uh, in our lives. I, I want to offer you this morning that, among other things, Christ makes a difference by giving us grace for the disappointments of life, strength for the struggles of life, and hope for the end of life. So let me repeat that. Some of you might want to write that down. Grace for the disappointments of life. Strength for the struggles of life. And hope for the end of life. So let's begin by looking at how God uh, gives us uh, grace for the disappointments at li uh, in life. Uh, look at verse 16. Paul writes, At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. Now, many believe that this was written during Paul's second imprisonment in Rome. Now, if you spent much time studying your Bible, you're probably thinking, well, I thought Paul was only imprisoned once in Rome. Well, we know for sure he was imprisoned once, but many Bible scholars believe that he was released, did some preaching and teaching before he was arrested a second time and finally executed. They base this argument in part on this verse where Paul is talking about his first defense or his first uh, trial. At any rate, uh, we all know that Paul faced many, many difficulties and struggles uh, during his lifetime. And now here he is near the end of his life saying, At my first defense, no one supported me. No one showed up. Everyone deserted me. But Lord, please don't hold it against them. This reminds me of the story I came across about an elderly missionary couple who returned home from the field after many, many years of faithful missionary service. Uh, the story goes that uh, this couple who had uh, served God for, I don't know, over 50 years in some uh, just very remote region of the world, uh, they returned to the United States for a well-deserved and well-earned uh, retirement. However, when they arrived at the airport, uh, no one was there to greet them. There had been some confusion at the mission office, and so there was nobody there to help them with their luggage. There was nobody there to help unload all their trunks. Uh, uh, there was nobody there to help them move into their new home. And so the elderly gentleman complained to his wife. He said, you know, we've come home after all these years, and there's no one who cares. 
And each day as they began to settle into their new home, his bitterness, you know, just got worse and worse. And he kept complaining to his wife. And she finally got fed up with him. And she said, well, why don't you just go in there and take it up with God? So uh, the man went into the bedroom. He spent some time uh, in prayer. And when he came out, he had a new look on his face. Which prompted his wife to ask, well, what happened? He said, well, I told God that we came home after all these years and, and nobody cares. And she said, well, what did God say? He had a smile on his face and he said, well, he said, you're not home yet. <laughs> you're not home yet. Can you relate to this missionary? Have you ever felt like that nobody cares? Can, can you imagine how Paul felt? I mean, here he stands all alone, all by himself. After all those years of faithful service, he knew that somebody could have stepped forward. Or somebody could have supported him. Somebody could have showed up. Uh, but instead of getting even or instead of retaliating, instead of moaning and groaning about it, Paul prays for them. This reveals a lot, I believe, about the character of Paul. He did not allow his disappointments to defeat him, uh, but instead he turned them into an opportunity to do something good. He prayed there at the end of verse 16, uh, may it not be charged against them. However, you know, when you think about it, this prayer was not original with Paul. Stephen prayed a similar prayer with Paul looking on when they were stoning him to death. In Acts chapter 7, you remember Paul was holding the coats. And Stephen prayed, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. But of course, when you really stop to think about it, this prayer was not original with Stephen either. Jesus is the one who originally cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Paul was able to pray for those who let him down because others had prayed the same prayer for him. But more than that, he was following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ who gives us the grace to forgive. This is a valuable lesson for us all to learn because uh, if you live long enough, somebody's going to let you down. Somebody's going to disappoint you. Somebody's going to hurt you. It might be a friend, it might be a parent, it might be a sibling, it might be a co-worker, it might be a neighbor. It might even be somebody in church. It might be a Bible study teacher, it could be a deacon. It might even be a pastor. One of my former pastors would often say, when disappointments come, you can either get bitter or you can get better. You can become bitter and harbor a load of anger and resentment, or you can get better by learning to forgive and extend grace to others. Uh, somebody said it this way. They said, bitterness is like an acid. It does more to the object in which it is stored than upon the object upon which it is poured. Forgiveness is a much, much better often, option because people often will let you down like they did with Paul. Or they'll knock you down like they did with Stephen. Or they might even nail you down like they did with Jesus. But the Bible teaches that our first response should be to forgive. Our Christianity does make a difference because our faith in Jesus Christ gives us grace for the disappointments of life and the ability to forgive others when they let us down. So let's move now to the second uh, example of how Jesus Christ makes a difference in our life. And the second example is this. Christ gives us strength for the trials of life. Christ gives us strength for the trials of life. And, and how much do we need this right now? Notice that the Lord didn't remove the trial from Paul's life. Instead, he went with him through the trial. Look at verse 17. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Often, God does not take away our troubles. Instead, he walks beside us through our troubles. For example, uh, Daniel was not saved out of the lion's den. Daniel was saved in the lion's den. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not saved out of the fiery furnace. They were saved in the fiery furnace. Uh, Jonah was not spared being swallowed by the big fish. Uh, he came to see the light while he was inside the fish. David was not routed around uh, the trials and disappointments of life. In fact, he knew them intimately. This is why he was able to write, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even Jesus was not spared the agony of the cross. He knows that it's often through the trials and difficulties of life that we experience the most growth. This is why he promises strength for the struggles. So what about you today? <clears throat> Are you experiencing any trials? I mean, how are things going at your house during this lockdown? <laughs> uh, you know, how, how's it going over there? Uh, uh, what about your finances? What about your marriage? What about your health? What about your relationships? We all face struggles and trials. But notice again what Paul says. He says, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. It's comforting to know that when I'm facing trials and difficulties that Jesus Christ is by my side. Now, I read that our English word comfort comes from two Latin words that mean uh, with strength. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the Latin words for comfort is fortis. It means brave and courageous. We usually think of comfort as, as, as soothing or consoling someone. But true comfort strengthens us to face whatever life throws at us. So my Christianity makes a difference because no matter what I face, no matter what I encounter, no matter what I'm going through, Jesus Christ is standing by my side. Now, I don't know about you, but as I read some of the headlines that I've been reading lately, it's good to know that Jesus is by my side. When I see all these frightening images on television, it's good to know that Jesus is by my side. Uh, when, when I think about all those people who are grieving the loss of a loved one right now, it's good to know that Jesus is by my side. When I talk to people who are trying to put the pieces of their life back together, it's good to know that Jesus is by my side. The word strength, as it's used here, literally means to empower or to pour power into. And that's exactly what Jesus does for us. He gives us the strength to stand and face the trials and difficulties of life. Therefore, my Christianity makes a difference because Jesus gives me the comfort and the strength to make it through the trials and difficulties that I'm currently facing. So Jesus gives us grace for the disappointments of life. He gives us strength for the struggles of life. But now number three, Christ gives us hope for the end of life. Look at verse 18. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. When this passage was written, Paul was nearing uh, the end of his life. Uh, I know that because if you look back up at verse 7 of this chapter, uh, it says, I fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. In other words, Paul's saying, you know, time's almost run out for me, but I am not without hope. Because he goes on to say in verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So again, Paul was not without hope. He was not without hope because he knew what the future held for him. Like it or not, a death is one day coming for each one of us. Uh, George Bernard Shaw once quipped, he said, one out of one die. <laughs> And, and Augustine is quoted as saying, uh, you know, the doctor's final prognosis for each one of us will ultimately be, he will not get over this. And you know what? He's absolutely right. Ultimately, we will not get over this, but we should not be discouraged because Paul reminds us in our text today that one day soon the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. I'm so glad that my hope is in the Lord and not in this world. I mean, let's face it. 
with everything we're seeing on television right now and everything we're seeing on the internet and everything we're reading in, in the newspaper, it's just too much. I mean, if I didn't have Jesus Christ in my life, this would be overwhelming. But here's what I want to tell you today. We need to get our eyes off the TV and into God's Word. We've got to learn to put our trust and believe in what He says to us. So the next time you're feeling overwhelmed with all this bad news, uh, claim the promise of this verse, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into His heavenly kingdom. Uh, to Him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Listen, we've got Christ on our side. We don't, like, we don't have to live like people without hope. Because no matter what happens, God promises that He will bring us safely into His heavenly kingdom. I came across a story about a, a young man. He was a youth uh, leader, a youth intern at a big church in Texas. He would do that every summer, and then he would go back uh, to uh, finish uh, school in the fall and uh, the story goes that there was a vivacious young uh, girl there in the youth group. Her name was Joy. And this intern had just watched her uh, uh, just bloom and blossom right before his eyes. She became one of the leaders uh, of the youth group, uh, one of their most effective uh, young ladies. So you can imagine the shock when he received a call from some of the church members uh, telling him that Joy had been diagnosed with terminal cancer and that she only had a few months to live. So as quickly as he could, he made arrangements to leave school and go and visit with this girl that had been such a vital part of his youth ministry. And when he arrived at the hospital, he was surprised at how quickly the cancer had taken its toll on her body. His visit seemed to cheer her up as they began to talk about all the good times and, and the good things that they'd shared uh, together. But finally, she looked at this young minister and she said, Do you know what it's like? to live without hope. And he responded the way most of us would. He kind of put his head down. He dug his toe uh, in the carpet. And finally he looked up at her with a tear in his eye. And he said, no, no, Joy. I don't know what it's like to live without hope. And she smiled and she said, neither do I. She knew that Christ would see her through until the end, and he would take her safely into his heavenly kingdom. Listen, Christianity does make a difference. You, you might not believe me right now, and, and I know you don't even want to think about it, but someday somebody's going to let you down, or, or someday the doctor's going to say, I'm sorry, but the tests were positive, or I'm sorry, there's nothing else that we can do. And when that happens, I want you to remember that faith in Jesus Christ does make a difference. He will give you grace for the disappointments in life. He will give you strength for the trials of life. He will give you hope for the end of life. But you've got to trust Him. You've got to put your faith in Him. Now, I, I don't want to be morbid uh, this morning, but I've been in the room on a number of occasions when the doctors have pulled the plug or when they have turned off the machines. And I've held hands with the family members as the last breath of their loved one has escaped from their body. Our Bible teaches that at that moment, at that second, our eternal destiny is sealed. Either you have made your preparations to, to meet your maker or you have not. What you do with Jesus Christ makes a difference in this life and an eternal difference in the next. Jesus gives you grace and strength for the trials and difficulties of this life and hope for the next life. This is what Paul was getting at in 1 Corinthians 15 when he wrote, If in Christ we hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But if you're familiar with that wonderful passage, you know that he goes on to talk about the hope that we have in the resurrection and in the life to come. So let me ask you a question this morning. Do you have this hope? Do you know this peace? Do you have this strength that we're talking about uh, today? Well, Jesus is ready to give it to you if you'll only step out in faith and put your trust in Him. I want to invite you this morning to pray a simple prayer with me if you'd like to have this relationship that we're talking about uh, today. I'm going to read it to you first. And if this prayer expresses the desire of your heart, then we'll go over it again, and I'll invite you to pray uh, with me. 
But let me read it to you first. Lord Jesus, I need this grace. I need this strength. I need this hope. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my life today. I welcome you as my Savior and my Lord. I commit my life to you. I need your strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Thank you for coming into my life. Amen. Now, if this prayer expresses the desire of your heart, I want to invite you to pray it with me uh, now. Lord Jesus, I need this grace. I need this strength. I need this hope. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my life today. I welcome you as my Savior and my Lord. I commit my life to you. I need your strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Thank you for coming into my life. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me today, and I mean, you really meant it, I'd love to hear from you. You, you can shoot me a comment uh, on the Facebook or on the YouTube. You can, uh, I'm sure, make comments there. Or you can send me an email. Uh, give, me a, give me a phone call. Uh, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we would love to celebrate that decision uh, with you today. So thank you for watching. Uh, God bless you. Hope you have a blessed uh, Holy Week. And we'll see you next Sunday for Easter Sunday. Thanks for watching. God bless you.